I'm starting to get the hang of Pascha week. I like how the hours repeat in the same way. It makes it easier to follow along. Me too. It's my favorite time of year. Do you think you can remember the structure of each hour off the top of your head? I think so. Let's see. Old Testament readings, then still Tetigom, Psalms, Gospel readings, and at the end, like a summary of the important points of the hour, right? You got it. Well done. I think Silk Teti Gom is my favorite. I know what you mean. The words are beautiful, and it's such a powerful hymn of praise to our Lord and Savior. But it's important to follow along with the readings, too. What can you remember from Eve of Tuesday or Monday night readings? That's when our Lord and his disciples walked back to Bethany, and they passed the fig tree that Jesus cursed on Monday morning, right? Very good. Do you remember the lesson of the fig tree? There were two, right? I remember that we should not be like the fig tree. That we should have the fruit of good deeds, not empty like the tree that Jesus cursed. Exactly. The other lesson our Lord was teaching us was that when we ask anything in faith, then it will happen. Oh, now I remember. Jesus said that if we have a faith as small as a mustard seed, and if we ask a mountain to move, it will move. Like what happened in Egypt with Mount Ma'atam and Pope Abraham and St. Simon the Tanner. But why a mustard seed? A mustard seed is one of the smallest seeds in the world. Our Lord was trying to explain that even the smallest amount of faith is enough to perform miracles in his name. That's pretty cool. A small seed of faith to move a mountain? That's right. What about this morning's readings for Tuesday morning? Our Lord often taught with parables to teach us important lessons. This morning, Christ is reminding us that this earth is not our everlasting home. Heaven is our true home. We pray and wait to be with God in heaven when he calls us. How did the parable teach us about heaven? Good question. First, let's go over the parable. A rich man goes on a trip, but before he leaves, he gives bags of gold to three servants. To the first servant, he gives five bags. To the second, he gives two bags. And to the third servant, he gives one bag of gold. While their master was away, the first servant earned five bags more with his gold, and the second servant earned two bags more. Do you remember what the third servant did? He buried it, right? So weird. Yes. Instead of using the gift his master gave him to earn more and make his master happy, he buried it. When the master comes home, he calls the three servants and asks them what they did with their bags of gold. He rewards the first two servants for working hard and making good choices. He tells each of them, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. I bet they were so happy. We pray that the Lord tells us the same thing one day. When we use the gifts that Jesus gives us for doing good, he will be happy with us and reward us in heaven and earth. So the third servant who buried his gold, what happened to him? He is the warning to all of us. The third servant is punished for wasting the opportunity that God gave him. Just like the fig tree, it was given a chance to have fruit, but was cursed because it had leaves and no fruit. I would much rather hear our Lord say, Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Me too. Unfortunately, Judas Iscariot wasn't thinking of his eternal reward. Instead, he was focused on money and greed. His love for money drove him to betray our Lord Jesus Christ on Wednesday of Holy Week. Why would he betray the Lord after he saw all the miracles that Jesus did right in front of him? It is easy to make mistakes. That's why we have to stay focused and exercise self-control so we don't let anything in our lives come in front of our love for God. The woman who poured perfume on our Lord's head on Wednesday is a great example of someone who put the love of God before her worries of money. So Judas betrayed Jesus for money, and the woman spent her money on Jesus to show her love for him. Both happened on Wednesday. A bad choice and a good choice. I hope I'm more like the woman. I pray so too, but our best example is from our Lord Jesus Christ. He teaches us how to treat others by putting them before ourselves on Thursday. Even though he is the creator of the world and king of kings, he stooped down to wash the feet of his disciples. Oh, he did that at the Last Supper, right? That's when Jesus taught us about the Holy Communion. Very good. Our Lord made a new promise with us on that Holy Thursday. When we share in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Holy Communion, we become one with him. He died on the cross on Good Friday to offer this sacrament to us and save us from the punishment of our sins. Did it hurt him when he died on the cross? Yes, honey, it did. 
but he knew it would and did it anyway. Because he loves us so much and wanted us to be with him in heaven, he had to die so that he could open up the doors of heaven for us. And his death was not the end, was it? That's right. He rose from the dead. He's alive again. Yes, and we pray to always keep the good news of our salvation in our Lord Jesus Christ alive in our hearts.